I call me Shanice. I'm 25 years old. Mm. I'm located in Nairobi, but basically born in Motate in Tetatavota County. I finished my form for in the year 2013. I joined college, but I didn't manage to finish because of some unavoidable circumstances. Mm-hmm. I study economy. You know, after when I did manage to finish up my school, I decided to go abroad at least so that I can work there and say for myself that I can take back to can take myself back to school. I applied the job through agent and I traveled to up to Dubai. That's UA Dubai, where I stayed for like six months. When you when you travel, the agent will take you to the airport and the contract is written in Arabic, not in English. So you can understand what you are signing. And you must sign before you leave, of which you are not getting what is written there. When you go to the airport, they will take your phone, your stuff, like your, your passport, and the, like everything, your ID, so that when you go there, you don't have time to escape or maybe decide to go because they will not give you back the, your stuffs. They will take the passport, everything. Passport, ID, your visa, everything. Ukifika kule, the things you find, if it's about making calls, there must be someone who will translate to them what you are talking to your, maybe your relatives or family members. There must be someone who will translate to them so that you will not say anything concerning what you are facing in that house to either your guardians or maybe some other people you are communicating with. What I applied is not what I found there. I applied to go and teach some kids, but I went there, it was like a household. But things were different. It was very difficult. I was full of maltreatment. I faced a lot. You know, kids over there, they don't follow what they are being told. So when I went there, I was I was working as a house help for less than three months, whereby I managed to escape because of fighting every time you are being beaten because of something you don't know. The work is too much. You work until one one a.m. You sleep for two hours by four you awake. You have to wake up by four. About the food, you are not allowed to eat any food and unless the people they eat, your bosses eat, then the remains, the rest, that's what you have to eat. If they don't, if they, there's nothing which has remained, you have to stay hungry until the, until the, if it's lunch time, you have to stay hungry until maybe supper. When I went there, I was expecting to face a very good life over there as a work money because if you compare here in Kenya and there there's a, a bit different of salary so there what I was told was I was told I'd be paid around 40,000 but when I was there the salary was around 27 27,000 of which I worked for three months but I I got nothing they never paid me there was no food, no salary, and no time to rest. I got the agent, but he received my call. But the moment he heard it, my voice, he blocked me, and I never got to call her to call him again. So I had to escape for my own life. So I went to the embassy, whereby I went to ask for some help. I did not get the documents, I just left. I woke up early in the morning because we used to wake up by 4. So that 4, 4, 4 a.m., I just opened the door and escaped. I ran away. For I walked for like two hours because there was, I had no money to, to get like a matato or a vehicle to take me to the embassy. On the way walking, I found the Filip Filipino embassy whereby they directed me where I can get the Kenyan embassy, which is 
very far from Filipino embassy. But only one of the Filipino helped me. He managed to give me like 100 dirhams to get a taxi to Kenyan embassy. Whereby when I reached there, I tried to explain to them about what has happened, what I've gone through. There was no salary for three months. There was no food. I was just, we were just eating the remains. After they eat, what will remain is what you eat. The embassy, they never helped me. They told me to go out there and just try all the means to get money for the ticket. They don't care what we do. They said they told me, just go out there. Whether you sell yourself, you sell your body. There are so many men outside there whereby you can get high chances of getting the money for the ticket. I found things were different, whereby I stayed in a bus station for more like three weeks, whereby it was not easy. I used to eat in a garbage. I used like where people throw the, the remains, the dustbin. That's where I used to, to survive. I eat there, I sleep without taking a shower, I don't change my clothes. That's what I went through in that Dubai. And funny thing, you know, the, the policemen there, they don't understand English. That's why they never asked me why I'm, I'm staying in a bus station for that long. Because they don't understand English and I don't understand Arabic. But I managed to communicate with someone in Kenya, Francis Motuku, from South B. He works with the in one of the church, Catholic church in South Bay, um, the Our Lady of Queen of Peace. But he managed to communicate with one of the Catholic in Dubai, whereby they helped me. One of the lady helped me to come to pay the ticket. That's how I managed to come back to Kenya. The embassy communicated to to the to my boss, whereby. She brought the, the passport only after one month. Yeah. Actually, for now, I can't say I'm well stable, but I'm, I'm not doing anything. I was working some months ago, but I managed to. I can't say it's good luck or bad luck, but the company I was working was stopped to wait until the further notice whereby for now I'm just hustling outside small small things so that I can survive myself. So the COVID-19 has affected everything because I was working in a company whereby we used to make sanitizers, the, the dish, yeah, I mean the detergents, whereby after the COVID-19 it affected the company and we had to stop until the father noticed, whereby, for now we are staying at home. I didn't manage to save anything to take my, to, to go back to school. So for now I'm just at home, not doing anything. I'm just waiting and still searching for some job. No, I'm just asking for like the government to help those people who are facing challenges, especially in the Middle East. Just try to, to help them because people are suffering out there, but you have no idea what people are facing there. And the same thing, those who came back in this country, they came with nothing, like completely nothing, they came zero. Still, you can help us manage to proceed with life.